As the previous installments of Part 16 had diligently laid the background and groundwork for how the operation had come to be in the Alvin battle within the larger Houston metro area battle, as the main maneuver elements of the 1st PLAN Marine Brigade, its heavy, medium, and, l and light combined arms battalions had moved from the city of League City and Dickinson area to surround the town of Alvin on three sides, minus its fourth heavily wooded north and western side of the town, which would be handled by the PLAN air assault troops of the PLAN Marine 1st Brigade's air assault battalion, which was comprised of four air assault infantry marine companies, one combat aviation company with their Z9WA attack helos, and of course their transportation helo company comprised of their Z18 transportation helicopters with the aviation companies, both the combat aviation and transport aviation, having a maintenance platoon and headquarters and support platoon, which were based on the Type 075 helicopter carrier as the gunships would fly support for not only their own marines by essentially circling the landing zone area to secure it before the air assault would take place with the marines essentially being dropped off in their LZ in a clearing within this heavily wooded area to begin to push out their perimeter and then begin to aggressively patrol the area, very similar to what had occurred with American air assault operations during the Vietnam War, as the retreat of VC and NVA units in some cases were cut off completely by the insertion of air assault infantry forces who would aggressively patrol the thick, dense jungle of Southeast Asia looking for these forces and then upon finding them, engage them in set-piece battles and destroy them. And now the exact same tactics were being utilized against the American forces as earlier on the air assault troops had done a completely different type of operation in seizing control of the Texas City, Texas port area intact before moving on with the fresh landing of the Recon Battalion, another light battalion within the 1st Brigade, to capture the major oil refineries intact, including the Valero and Marathon oil refineries, which were among the largest in the nation. As these forces then had been picked up after their helos had returned to the carrier for maintenance and refueling and rearmaments, they were then picked up in Texas City, Texas for their operation to the direct west of Alvin to cut off any possibility of the American defending forces retreating who were horribly disorganized and poorly coordinated as they were comprised of a massive number of small groupings of forces with no centralized command and they were trying to essentially work together on the fly, as the saying went, and were making ad hoc defensive plans as the battle progressed. As the logistical comparison was night and day between the PLAN Marines and the American Defending Forces, the PLAN Marines had a steady stream of their own logistics, earmarked specifically for their brigade, coming ashore at the freshly captured port in Texas City, Texas, and being literally brought just up the highway of Highway 6, which ran into Texas City, Texas. From there, it also ran through Alvin and into the core metro area, whereupon the combat support battalion of the 1st PLAN Marine Brigade would truck in all of the necessary requisite ammunition and supplies to the headquarters and support company of each of the three combined arms battalions who would then distribute it to the headquarters platoons who handled the logistics and command of each combat element. As the forces of the heavy combined arms battalion were they who were striking directly from the east while the medium moved north to cut off escape from the north and the light combined arms battalion moved in the south to cut off escape from the south while the air assault marines were inserted into the west of the town to cut off escape from that area. 
the operation had been a rapid success. And now, with the ability to strike enemies in depth, meaning behind the line of contact, with everything from their own artillery, from their PLZ-07 self-propelled amphibious howitzers that comprised their firing batteries of their artillery battalion, as well as a limited number of marine-operated CH-901A loitering munitions, typically armed with now the fragmentation warhead, as there were not very many armored vehicles remaining to contend with, and most of the enemies were comprised of groupings of infantry-like forces, as well as their attack helo gunships and their two different flying platoons, one platoon being sent to directly support the operations occurring in the northeast corner of the attack going on against Alvin, whereby there was one of two assault gun slash light tank companies of the ZBD 05s, which could even carry troops into battle, a full squad each, making these very unique vehicles as these were also amphibious and very rapid as far as their movements. They had a top speed of 40 miles an hour, which was relatively quick for a military vehicle. And one of the two companies of these vehicles, of these light tank slash assault guns, was operating in the northeast corner of the Alvin battle, along with an armored infantry marine company, which was comprised of strictly the IFV versions of this vehicle, with a different turret, with a rail-mounted HJ-73C anti-tank missile, which was relatively large for an anti-tank missile and very destructive. Although it had shorter range than most other PLA anti-tank missiles, it was still a very useful anti-armor weapon that could destroy a myriad of other targets as well. And they had their 30 millimeter autocannon on the IFV version, which was very destructive with the HE armor piercing ammunition. And there were several other ammunition types they could utilize for it as well. And the 105 millimeter low recoil rifled tank gun that was on the light tank slash amphibious assault gun was also highly destructive with, it, with its HE and fragmentation shells being the two major shells of choice for this particular operation as the logistics would ensure that a steady flow of shells, missiles, ammunition, and more would continue to flow in from the captured port at Texas City, Texas to the frontline fighting units as the distribution network worked its charm, as the saying went, and as it pertained to the Heliborn Infantry Forces of the PLAN Marine Air Assault Forces, they carried ample numbers of ammunition along with them in this particular instance, and they could have, if needed, the support of supply drones to actually fly them in supplies. That was always available to them. And due to inter-service rivalries, the PLAN Marines preferred to use their own logistical network, although the Army's logistical network of the PLA, their ground forces, was always open to them if they needed it. But the PLAN Marines wanted to show what they were fully capable of as a fighting force, and they were indeed an extremely well-rounded fighting force and fully capable of undertaking very complex operations as they had a wide range of capabilities, as was being demonstrated in the Alvin battle, as the heavy forces and some of the light forces as the recon battalion had been pulled back to serve as route security for the logistical forces of the, of the brigade's support combat support battalion to guard Route 6 for them to bring up their logistics from the port, as well as also the air defense battalion lacking any air targets anymore. They now, too, would assist the recon battalion in route security for the logistical elements. And now the heavy forces doing their sickle cut maneuver across the entire southern outer suburbs of the Houston metro area from League City Dickinson all the way to Richmond and then back into the core metro area as indicated by the unit marker here on Highway 69, which is the interstate. These forces would smash the last remaining resistance that had congregated in Alvin, which actually went according to plan as two different TU-22M air raids, one on Richmond, which was the last TU-22M to drop its payloads, and another to the east of Alvin on the League City area had decimated 
many of the forces that would be encountered here in Alvin as the forces moving into Alvin were the remnants of the forces hit by the Tu-22M air raids, whether it was armed reactionary civilians and American paramilitary alphabet or local SWAT elements, or whether it was the actual military remnants, such as the first of the 141st, their surviving gun crews, a single FDC section with them, whose equipment was utterly useless by this point as... All American ISR capabilities were down, their satellites were gone due to the anti-sat and cyber strikes, as well as anything connected to the internet, and their redundant communications were being jammed by the Russian VVS, or Air Force, SU-27 squadron returning to the area as some of their aircraft were co equipped with the Kabini electronic jamming systems to jam redundant communications, such as radio and portable radars that were not hooked up to the internet and thus couldn't be hacked or were not dependent on satellite per se. And now, as these forces were explained previously, they had been laying down enormous fire on the line of contact as the Americans had forces spread out throughout the entire east-facing du duration of the entire line of contact, stretching from their hard point in the north, which was the chemical plant, which had been converted into a fortress, which actually would have been effective had they had the proper weaponry to equip the force that was manning it, as well as also the ISR capabilities to see enemies from even further than just the eye view they would get from looking out of the building, which this building tactically did control the northeast facing entrances into town, which was an intelligent choice of a hard point, as well as the very heavily steel reinforced concrete buildings, although the withering fire from repeated 105 millimeter HE shells, as well as also the 57 millimeter rocket fire barrage from the Hilo gunships operating in the area, 23 millimeter autocannon slash chain gun fire from these same Hilos, as well as also anti tank missiles like the AKD 10, which is a millimeter wave guided anti-tank missile and had an extremely tough penetration ability and could and was a very destructive weapon even against hardened buildings and these weapons were already being used to great effect as they were preemptively destroying American howitzers as the smoke had cleared from the previous Tu-22M air raid, which was the only reason why the American artillery forces had been able to hurriedly flee the short several mile distance to Alvin from League City as the smoke from the struck fuel storage facility had billowed up into the area and only temporarily caused issues for the massively enormous Chinese surveillance grid, allowing them to hide in this garage, this oil change and automotive repair garage, as well as also in these thickly wooded areas in the northern part of town here and here. As they set up their howitzers, only two of them would get off any meaningful shots that would cause casualties. However, under ideal conditions, they possibly could have caused even more damage, although without air defense and without any other supporting elements that were meaningful, these howitzers were nothing but large liabilities and big targets to themselves, as the gun crews would find out almost in instantaneously after revealing their position within the garage, and the M777 already being fired at as it was discovered just as it was firing its 155mm shell by the quadcopter ISR assets, which were steadily patrolling the entire area and could see everything that was going on on the ground as all the American movements were duly noted and recorded to the AI processing system, which then advised the forces on the ground how best to deploy their forces in real time, as this technology is absolutely real. China and Russia possess it, and it was being utilized by the PLAN Marines in this battle to become a highly flexible and devastating fighting force. Even though it's war and they would suffer some casualties, for the most part, the Americans would suffer horrendous casualties when compared to the PLAN Marines who had every advantage over them, especially organization and discipline and a central command to essentially deploy these forces effectively into battle, as well as the AI technology which which revolutionized warfare, which the American forces did not have as they were thrust back into the Stone Age by the anti-satellite cyber strikes and local electronic jamming in multiple areas. 
And now they were paying for it, similar to the Iraqis in the first Gulf War, but much worse. As these forces, though, moved into place and fired their 30 millimeter auto cannon ammunition and were tactically being assisted by the company's platoons from the light tank slash amphibious assault gun company in this area, as the other of these companies was to the south and off map attacking the strong point at the community college, along with the combat engineer company and also the other armored infantry company as the third and last one was off map to the north of this light tank company and the mortar company of the heavy combined arms battalion as well as the, even the medium and light combined arms battalions were firing in direct support of the attack going on in the south against the other hard point because there were much more in terms of defending forces there than even were at this chemical plant as there were approximately over 70 at the chemical plant as these forces were moving into the area to guard the flanks of their main striking platoon, moving into this area and encountering these forces on the other side of the highway bridge as the highway was lower than the access road and bridge that was above it. And they were using this as a fighting position. They were viciously cut down by a hail of 12.7 millimeter fire, as well as also even the coax fire. And as this platoon had dismounted their squads, their small arms fire as well, including 35 millimeter grenades from beneath some of the QBZ-95 of the barrels that possess those, of the men that possess those, as well as anti-personnel rocket-propelled grenades, and also the HJ-08 was available, although it would only be used sparingly by these forces as their other weapons were more than enough for what they were trying to achieve as their vehicle-based firepower was already immense and the lead vehicle of this platoon as it rolled down this road in a single column and then rolled through this farm property after destroying with a shell a he shell these this wooded area where these forces were fighting back including the entire farm property being shelled into oblivion before deploying their squads to watch all their sectors of fire and lay down enormous volumes of fire on the American forces, including over in this area, as they fired 105 millimeter fragmentation and HE shells into this area and decimated them, and even fired into this wooded area even after the AKD 10s had come in and annihilated these gun crews just to ensure that everything was annihilated in this area. And these loitering munitions operated by Marines that didn't get hit by the 155 shell fired by the M777, they didn't lose their fueler, they didn't lose their other two links armored ATVs, which are like miniature MRAPs, but they did lose two down here in their star formation here where they where they had been hit by the shell as it landed, destroying these two ATVs, these up-armored ATVs, as well as also a Shangji supply truck and damaging their armored recovery vehicle. But the command elements and the rest of the headquarters platoon, including their fueler, were still intact. And this company was fully still combat effective and being supported heavily by the flying platoon in the area of the Z9WA attack helo gunships, as seen in this image here, as the gunships could fire their very potent 23mm fire to rake up and down the area and to support the armored infantry and in their IFVs and the light tank slash amphibious assault guns who are pressing their attack now from the northeast heading to the southwest and had vectored fire into this area firing fragmentation shells while the 30 millimeter fire essentially annihilated everything in this wood area right here this wooded area adjacent to this drainage ditch that emptied out into the tributary here and it would be used as a fighting position by the marines of this platoon here as the individual vehicles were moving up and they were in their double column rolling shield formations before being deployed for out from behind the vehicles into thick wooded areas and the drainage ditch with their vehicles beside them offering them mutual support as the dismounted troops and vehicles alike laid down enormous fire on this city block and this area here as again the american defending forces stretched all the way down to the other strong point where hillcrest and alvin met at the southern tip of alvin in the southeast of the town and there were 3,000 defenders throughout the entire town. 2,500 were armed reactionary civilians who believed before this happened that they could fight the PLA at their mailbox with a shotgun, finding out the brutal realities of warfare are drastically different and they lacked the capability, organization, the discipline, and oftentimes being out of shape as well. And 
their use of their weapons, being primarily small arms, were not adequate against armored phalanxes supported by air power and ample artillery fire, mortars, and more, as the concentration of firepower annihilated them, and the strikes in depth ensured that many of the defenders wouldn't even get off a shot. They would essentially be blanketed by 122mm artillery shells from the firing batteries of the PLZ-07 Marine howitzers that comprise their firing batteries, including this forward-deployed battery firing even further away and assisting the aerosol troops in their landing by firing terrain denial strikes before they even landed and hitting certain enemy forces vis-a-vis -vis the Marines as they tried to flee the area already. And by the time these vehicles had reached this point here and here of these two armored infantry platoons that were going to storm the town, as much of the rest of the town to the west had been heavily shelled and also hit by thousands of pounds of either precision or free-fall munitions, and some even air-fired like the KD-88 standoff precision air-to-ground missile, these aircraft, the J-10s, and the other fighters of the J-20 squadron with their accompanying FH-97A stealth fighter drones all returned as per SOP with at least two air-to-air -air missiles, even though the USAF had been completely neutralized and it wasn't necessary. It was standard operating procedure for self-defense of the aircraft, while the rest of these aircraft were heavily laden with either precision air-to-ground munitions, such as laser-guided or satellite-guided, like Baidu, which is China's GPS, or racks of free-fall munitions that they could release in a dive attack, giving these munitions a massive spread over a large area while still being somewhat accurate and hitting what they were diving at. And this amount of munitions by just the J-10 squadron alone was so massive, it exceeded 100,000 total pounds of munitions as each aircraft carried between 8 and 10,000 pounds as the munition types carried by each aircraft varied, and some aircraft had a little more while others had a little less, some carried more on the precision end while others carried more on the free-fall munition end. But all of them contributed to the massive destruction of the town, as to the immediate north and slightly west of this map, a mile away, was the rest of the town, the outer edges of it, approximately another nearly one mile area where there were horse ranches and other large homes on this edge of town. There was a motel, there was small businesses and some homes and a gas station in this area of the outer edges of town. While a mile away across this massively forested area, which the Americans thought they could use as a way to escape as the heavier maneuver elements, though they could have managed it, it would have slowed them down to have to move through this area. Hence, the air assault marines were a rapid strike force that could deploy into these types of environments with ease and move around freely and quickly on foot. As this area, again, is a two mile by one and a half mile area, the a mile away from town, there were some large country homes. One had been hit by artillery already as American combatants were seen trying to leave the area and temporarily taking shelter in there. This ranch here, which was a horse ranch, this ranch house would be destroyed soon thereafter as this operation was beginning in earnest. As already in the operation, forces on the outer periphery had been wiped out as these forces had pushed out their perimeter of their LZ. These squads breaking into half-squad elements and just mutually supporting one another with ISR assets scouting the entire area as the third and final platoon was landed in and they all did their diamond formations as they came out of each side of the helo and did their protective diamond formations around it. Their other platoon had, and, and their five squads had already pushed out in half-squad formations to engage and destroy any enemies that were in the area at the time where the operation had begun and they were supported in full by their flying platoon of Z9WA attack helo gunships, which had used their 23mm autocannons to annihilate this technical and these personnel that had congregated around it in this long driveway of this Lake Wood House, Woods Lake House, as there were lakes in this area, smaller and larger lakes. And this house in the woods was a large country estate, and they had a driveway that went all the way out to a farm road, and there were other homes like that, like this one that had been destroyed due to enemies inside of it. Artillery had struck this one, as well as attack helo gunship fire being vectored into areas where enemy activity was spotted by these PLAN Marine forces and their ISR 
ubiquitous surveillance grid that they had established as each squad deployed their own assets. And this added, of course, to the high altitude assets, which were still patrolling the entire Houston metro area. And of course, satellite, which all interlaid to provide a real time battlefield imaging of everything that was going on in real time, all processed by artificial intelligence, which guided the forces on the best use of their troops and their best use of their assets and ammunition, which would cut down on friendly fire casualties while also maximizing the damage done to enemy forces, making these forces highly flexible and able to react to any and all changes on the modern fluid battlefield. As this battle was wrapping up by this point, as the line of contact faded before the withering attack by the heavy PLA and Marine forces of this heavy armored infantry company and this light tank slash amphibious assault gun company supported by a flying platoon of attack helo gunships, the Z9WAs, which had a panoramic view of the entire battlefield as they could rise and lower themselves or move if needed, if needed to attack different targets throughout. As the artillery showered much of the town, along with some punishing airstrikes, including J-10s that even just dropped some precision munitions to the south to aid the combat engineers, and the other light tank company, or assault gun company, and the other armored infantry company, which these three companies, also of the same battalion as these two companies were, were assaulting the other hard point to the southeast of the town. And now the, everything in between was falling away as the withering firepower and the tactical vectoring of the fire in L-shaped fire from these forces ended up being far too much, including with the massive support from the helos and at least this section of the battle where they were laying down enormous volleys of rockets on this hard point, 57 millimeter as well as chain gun fire from their 23 mils and also their very potent AKD-10 AKD millimeter wave guided anti-tank missiles, which again had a high penetration capability and could easily destroy hardened buildings in some cases because they could penetrate concrete. As these Loitering munitions had struck the last remaining fuel truck that the Americans even had in their possession, which would have been very helpful to their military forces that remained, including the Naval and Coast Guard personnel. This other one had struck and destroyed this supply truck, this LMTV, which had some of the last remaining ammunition these forces at the hard point could have used to defend the area, which did a massive crippling blow to these defending forces, at least in that local area, while most of the rest of the defending forces could only carry what they could physically carry on their person, which varied from man to man, and not all of the reactionary armed civilians were even well prepared. Some didn't even have body armor, or at least a basic plate carrier, and even less had helmets. As these vehicles were all shredded up by the 30 mil and 23 millimeter autocannon fires from the ground-based IVs and the attack helo gunships, which again raked up and down the area with their very potent destructive ammunitions, including a, even some HJ-73C fire coming from these vehicles that were guarding the flanks and deployed ground troops into the drainage ditch and woods here to lay down fire on these city blocks facing the outside of town, this field right here by these highways. These forces now proceeded into the town, and as their ISR assets saw everything, including these forces in the alleyway, they had promptly cut them down with their 30 mil fire into this corner at an angle to where the shrapnel simply was far too much and cut all these forces down, who were preparing to attack them from around the corner with Molotovs, as was being done in this area, but this platoon deployed all five of its squads to run into these horribly gutted buildings that had been hit by ample 30 mil fire, even one hit by an HE shell in the corner here from one of the light tanks vectoring fire into the area, which destroyed these enemies on the rooftops as they were trying to fire everything they had down at these approaching vehicles clearing the flanks as they even fired a few AT4s, which hit the front of the vehicle and really did nothing to it as the armor on the front was exceptional strong on these IFVs and light tanks as again even the folding apparatus for the amphibious capabilities here added extra armor protection to the front of the vehicle which already had heavy armor to begin with and even added NERA or ERA plating on sensitive parts of the vehicle to make it more 
enduring. As these forces moved, these infantry squads deploying out of this area were ambushing these personnel that were in this alleyway from inside of this building and inside of this building as they kicked the door in and fired out the window into the alley at these personnel, while the vehicle also vectored fire into the corner of the buildings and cut these personnel down. And then their last two squads had deployed again into this building here and this building here, as they then proceeded just a bit further forward as per SOP, by which point these vehicles, after this grouping, had fled here into this wooded area and attempted to carry out a kamikaze Molotov attack, at least to cripple the lead vehicle so that the others following couldn't easily pass for a while. They had failed and were cut down by massive volumes of 12.7 millimeter turret fire, as well as also coax machine gun fire fired at them by the vehicles, turret gunners, as well as the gunners operating the coax, which is beside the main gun, and they simply annihilated these forces before proceeding towards the chemical plant, deploying three of their five squads into this area to hold these sectors of fire and continue to hold down fire on the main building, especially at the windows where the defending forces like to appear. At least on this side of the building, these vehicles were shelling literally so accurately that some flew in windows and blasted inside the rooms and completely annihilated the forces fighting out of these windows on this side and this side. Now these forces were fighting against this side and the vehicle fired shells into this hardened concrete building from this side as these vehicles were in a line. And they deployed their last two squads, which bounded and covered, as these forces had already been cut down by heavy fire from the vehicles and the troops dismounting out of them as they tried to run for cover between the buildings. These forces had successfully, at least for now, ran to safety behind this massive chemical storage building here, as well as the loading building that was connected by piping on stilting, as well as also this strong building, in, which was one of the offices for the chemical plant. This was the main building, the production facility. And as these forces tried to run, these two wedge formations bounding around the corner of the gate laid down heavy fire on them and could watch different sectors of fire interlocking fields of fire with everybody trained on this building, including also the ability to watch this entire field of fire, watching this area of streets that went to the northwest and towards the north center part of town before going to the northwest part and out of town. As these forces here had already been massively hit by AKD-10s and clipped on the end of this convoy here, this technical destroyed by 23 millimeter autocannon fire from the, or chain gun fire from the attack helo gunship, these two barely made it out of the area, at least for now. And these others fled the area as well, even as these missiles blasted in this area, which is why there's red indicated there, which was the shrapnel and the, some of the blast, the, the concussive wave moving in their direction, causing some injuries. As the fire was extremely severe as far as the counter battery fire against this city block, which annihilated all these defenders as activity was spotted in the parking lot as people were going in and out of this apartment building here. And this garage was gave itself away when this M119 fired a shell using the highest possible powder charge with the shell fuse combo of an HE shell with the armor with the PD fuse point detonation, which ripped right through the front of the IFV's armor due to the high velocity and short range, the short distance, as they literally bore sighted it, and it blasted out the back of the vehicle and wiped everybody out. So in the armored ambulance, ZBD-05 version from the headquarters platoon and the armored recovery vehicle went to recover the vehicle while these forces were giving them enormous fire support from these two platoons, clearing the flanks for their strike platoons to go in and take the town. They found no survivors, needless to say. And as that, as this strong point was now being fought over, as this building had been reduced to rubble by the vehicle firing a 105 HE shell at it, and it was a smaller, lighter building right before these squads made it through the gate, this squad now took position behind the rubble pile and began to exchange fire from around the corner as they exchanged fire from around the corner, but they were running very low on ammunition, and there were only four survivors left inside this entire building, as many of them had been gradually withered down by the withering fire coming from the light tank and assault guns, and also the fire coming from the attack helo gunships. And now, the fire coming from the dismounts as well into the area with continued 105 fire, until they ran out with their hands up in the air, weapons 
gone. And then these forces eventually surrendered as well, too, and they ended up surviving the battle for it. So there was a total of 14 enemy personnel that surrendered in this area for the PLAN Marines. As all of this fighting was already going on, the fighting in this area consisted of four survivors from the line of defense along a concrete abutment near this drainage ditch that separated the ditch from the buildings here, the loading dock area, and who ran inside the back of this grocery store along with 10 others from just off the map holding part of the line further to the south before they tactically bounded across the street. They looked around this corner while others went across and they watched the corner and they went across. But as they did so, these vehicles made it to the corner and saw everything with their quadcopter assets, of course. And they started to fire at them with coax fire and cut a few of them down, but the rest made it in. And then they fired their 30 mil fire at the corner of this building before then seeing these 15 coming up and firing 30 mil auto cannon fire at them, which shredded them into literal pieces. And then they continued to move past this annihilated block from the counter battery fire before deploying two of their squads into the building who engaged the survivors and made it inside in a firefight that lasted for several minutes before then clearing the rest of the building which took a little more time and then finally moving up with their vehicles tactically staying in steady communications into this apartment block which had by this point already lost this building everybody taking cover behind it and this technical to auto cannon fire from this 23 millimeter chain gun from the attack helo gunship firing a steady barrage against this light office building which was the rental office for these two apartments on the city block and destroyed this entire area with the heavy fire coming from the chain gun by which point now as these vehicles were crossing they had already seen this movement occurring where these forces ran into this building and these forces had moved up from further south and were now preparing to flee out of this area due to the immense artillery barrage going on literally just a few blocks over as the barrage steadily shifted from east to west west, west to east, but being careful not to cause any destruction to the area where their forces were assaulting. And now, as these forces entered this building, they ambushed out of the building these forces along with their vehicle base fire, cutting them down. And the other vehicles in the line of vehicles pummeled this weak office-type building on this corner with these small businesses here where these forces had run into with massive 35, or I'm sorry, 30 millimeter fires. These forces had already long since been destroyed in the early barrage while these two squads were deployed and the third or and the fifth and final squad from the lead vehicle was deployed into this building to check this building for any remaining combatants as all these were essentially no activity was spotted going on all these forces had been kia'd at the opening here and they checked this building as they were checking all buildings on the flanks of their vehicles before deploying squads to move up this street tactically bounding and covering as they had spotted american forces attempting to set up an ambush and they would get the drop on them first because they spotted them with their isr quadcopter assets as these forces sat here they controlled a field of fire that extended down the street and on all sides as their vehicles staggered their weapons and these squads held these buildings while these squads proceeded up the street these were really the only surviving buildings on this block here as these buildings have been either destroyed by artillery shelling or or by the 30 mil concentrated fire and some even anti-tank missile fire from hj 73 c's which simply leveled these buildings here and as these forces bounded and covered getting ready to attack these forces again these forces had already fled very early on just barely avoiding the shelling going on literally only a few blocks away from them as they fled this area they got out quick as did these forces here getting out and moving to other parts of town that were not currently being shelled which was a very tiny part of the north central area that connected to the northwest area here which connected to the heavily forested area that the locals knew they could probably use to escape but it would be cut off again by the very fast acting and powerful air assault troops of the PLA and marines able to bring to bear ample types of weaponry whether it was man carried man portable or whether it was aviation based like their rocket fire and 23 millimeter fire and anti-tank missile fires or mortars even from the maneuver elements from their mortar companies as they would now support the aerosol troops as their operation was now well underway and the other forces 
were essentially by 5 p.m. already claiming victory in this area, and for the last hour of the battle, until 6 when the battle ended, they would essentially just be clearing an area that had been totally decimated along with everybody mostly in it, except for the few that escaped, as the artillery had done a massively fine job, as it could be said, at destroying most of the town, as did the very massive airstrikes that were involved from the J-10 squadron, while the J-20 squadron, even its, even its accompanying fighter stealth drones, were all also on standby and could be used if needed, as well as the Russian VVS Su-27 squadron, also laden down with air-to-ground munitions, but the J-10s carried enough that no other of the fighter squadrons would be required from the coalition forces, as they were, they alone were enough to cause a level of destruction that was unfathomable to this very small town. As these forces cut these forces down and destroyed with an HJ-08 that this squad prepared for one of their men carrying it, fired into this vehicle, cutting, I mean, completely annihilating it, this MRAP here, with ease, and they then laid down heavy small arms fire at the same time as the HJ-08 was fired, and they cut these forces down who briefly tried to fire back when they realized they had been outflanked, but they were all cut down too quick to do anything, as again, they were spotted first by the ISR assets and were unable to react in a timely manner. These forces left this building into this parking lot, at which point these squads laid down heavy volumes of fire on them, and even a 23mm chain gun from one of the attack helos had spotted them rounding the corner and fired at the corner of this building, blasting them to pieces along with the fire vectored in from these forces who now held a field of fire this direction while these forces held it in this direction as they had also earlier helped to level much of the chemical plant hardpoint as it was now captured by the PLA and Marines. They had effectively won the entire battle in this part of the town and would again just now be moving through the rest of the town to clear the rubble to ensure that there were no survivors and if there were to either take them EPW or completely butcher them if they were even left at this point. And as their forces moved through what was left of the town approximately just over a mile or so to the west, which was heavily shelled and hit by airstrikes, the combat in this area was very heavy, as the air assault troops have, were now landing their third and last platoon of their Marine infantry troops, who were again aggressively patrolling the area by this point already reaching here in a line of their staggered column formations of this single platoon, leaving the area to patrol towards the south and the east, while the gunships now provided them enormous levels of support. Again, these forces had already been destroyed by the gunships and artillery fire, as, this, as some of the buildings were already hit, and the other forces had been cleared by the troops expanding their perimeter, including here by this small lake, where these forces bounded and covered these two half squads and simply cut these four down that were right here. And as the other forces fleeing down this farm road were, of course, already seen from much further away, the J-10s were coming in and also hitting other forces in the forest with their heavy munitions, whether 1,000-pound precision, laser-guided, or Baidu-guided, which is satellite-guided, or free-fall munitions. They were showering this wooded area and destroying hundreds of lives who were trying to pass through this area, where the same tributary flowed through that basically bent through the north of town all the way until it bent to the south when it went through the northeast section of Alvin. And these forces were trying to cross at the time, but were hit heavily as they were spotted by the high-altitude quadcopter, or the high-altitude recon drones, as well as also the quadcopter lower-level drones, which promptly moved out of the area as the fighters were inbound, the fast movers with their munitions. Artillery fire had come in and destroyed these forces very early on and were trying to transit the area behind these large country homes. This house had already been hit by 122 millimeter artillery fire as earlier personnel were spotted trying to go into it. As these personnel were fleeing this house trying to get out of the area, these Marines from this last landing platoon had gone in this direction to push out to the west while this squad pushed out to the north and near this farm road where it bent to the north. This squad here proceeded and bounded and covered into this area beyond the outer perimeter of the LZ and now held positions by this road and got into a short firefight with these forces fleeing this home. But these forces were promptly hit by precision-guided artillery fire from the 122mm artillery from the PLZ-07 Marine Artillery firing batteries. And as that was occurring, 
This squad from this platoon that had landed in the diamond formation here had moved as a wedge formation into this area. Their ISR assets had spotted enemy activity in this ravine in the woods as drainage was a big deal in areas like this due to flooding concerns as there were large homes and ranches out in this thickly wooded terrain. It was known for its horse ranches especially, such as this home and property with barn and shed right here and also a horse ranch here, but there was very thickly wooded terrain in this area as this whole mile right here that separates the northwest of town from this farm road is nothing but thick forest. And there were areas of the forest due to it being fall where there was no real cover from any type of canopy and there a lot of movement could be spotted. But then there were other areas where there were thick coniferous pines that temporarily could obscure IR signatures, which essentially varied as they moved through the area. As these forces pivoted and went east into this ravine that had been discovered by their quadcopter squad-based assets, this squad on the very end of this platoon had moved into the area here and attacked in an L-vectored fire with this squad here from this other platoon. These forces in the ravine, as they were spotted early on as these squads moved into the area, they were aggressively already patrolling the woods in the, on the outer boundaries of it here, and now they were moving towards the ravine to use it as a blocking position against forces trying to flee the area that had been spotted. And now the attack Elo gun Gunships were supporting this assault by the Marines by firing 57 millimeter rocket barrages into this massive area with four helo gunships unloading on these forces right here, including this group trying to move up, getting hit by rocket fire, all ISR directed and precise. As that was occurring, as these forces faced off in the woods against each other with the different American forces trying to fight back against the Marines. The Marines hit them hard with their massive air power brought to bear, their massive firepower from their 122 millimeter artillery, as well as their attack ELO gunships, their Z9WAs flying over the area in support of their ground troops of their same battalion of their Marine infantry company. As these squads moved into place to block this area with this ravine, they used it as a fighting position and helped to mow down these forces, even calling in precision artillery strikes on the survivors that were just outside of the rocket barrages fired by the attack helo gunships. And also the chain gun fire was then vectored into this area with the artillery about the same time as these forces were firing and cutting them all down, leading to massive destruction of life in this area. As all of this was happening, these two personnel on this ATV had moved through the area, had seen all the firefights going on in the rocket barrages not very far off from their position, and had hurriedly moved back and at about the same time had run into a technical, it was a truck on a lift kit and able to drive through rough terrain, as well as personnel following behind, approximately five, who moved to this area. They linked up and moved back to inform this larger group who they ostensibly had come from to scout ahead for that there was a lot of danger ahead, but they continued to move and decided that they would try to fight their way out if that was even possible. And as that happened, yet another group was coming up from the town itself, this street. It was the northwesternmost edge of town, and they were coming up through this drainage ravine into the thick forest area. But they would hold their positions and remain still and try to outlast the Marines and wait for them to finish their patrols as they would remain in the area to continue patrolling the area, even for some time after the battle had concluded, because the heavier maneuver elements would continue on to Richmond, letting them behind to patrol until their helos came back to retrieve them and bring them back to Texas City, Texas, while the helos would fly back to the Type 075 carrier for needed maintenance, maintenance as well as refueling and rearming for whatever next missions could possibly arise for the Marines. As these forces moved in two prongs, this large group, and they were hurriedly getting away from these airstrikes, which they were, which had already annihilated another large group of fleeing American armed civilians and other personnel, including this small group here that was just outside of the blast radius that got all these personnel here, they were then hit by these 4,000 pounds worth of airdrop munitions and destroyed. As they were fleeing from all of that, to their south, mortar barrages of 82 millimeter mortars were striking the outer edges of the forest and also the outer edges of town, where the forest and the town effectively came together in the backyards of these homes and this business parking lot here, which the mortar strikes were devastating, all ISR directed, and were cutting down small groupings of different personnel, 
running in different directions who were not coordinated and were basically in a panicked retreat trying to flee the area. As that happened, a mortar had come into this motel parking lot and decimated this technical, these four personnel around it, and, and destroyed this other one as it was pulling out of the parking lot, landing just on time to do all that damage. While these others fled, led by a Max Pro MRAP with a machine gun mounted on it, a M250 cal, these AKD-10s from this gunship flew in and blasted these vehicles into oblivion while the chain gun lit up this parking lot by this gas station and destroyed this technical. While these forces fled the into, or into the town from the north into the south as they had made it here but then decided to go take the ravine this direction, they would never make it out alive. As these remaining military personnel were mixed military, mostly naval and coast guard personnel, as the rockets came in and they were leaving the same area as all these personnel were trying to do, they changed direction quickly as they just narrowly missed the rocket strikes and began to tactically bound in cover to try to get out of this area alive, at which point, as these squads were shifting positions after this had effectively been resolved in this area, they shifted positions slightly down to the south but would hold these positions facing east as, again, the other squads of their platoon would patrol further to the south by moving down the ravine and beginning to bound and cover tactically together as their ISR assets had spotted these two wedge formations of mixed military personnel, again, mostly naval security specialists and Coast Guard personnel, bounding and covering themselves by the edge of this wood line. As these forces had been destroyed by rocket fire from this attack helo gunship early on, with the rest entering this building just out of the range of the rockets and being destroyed by 23 millimeter chain gun fire into the building, the Hilo here would support with its autocannon these forces after it had finished up in this area as by now these forces had basically done an L vector of fire against these two squads by the time they were at this point right here at the southernmost edge of the map in this heavily forested area. They, they had fired on them from this direction and this direction and would eventually cut down this whole squad before they could even escape as they kept trying to move forward and lost contact with the other squad who tried to outflank this squad because they realized they were taking fire from them who broke into two half squads and did a double fish hook where essentially what they do is they take turns firing as they move in a gradual semicircle leapfrogging that way until they surround and fire from two different directions the back of this grouping who would try to invert their wedge but would fail because it would be too late and their tactical formation would be unsuccessful as they would try to invert their wedge to face the new direction of their attackers they would be cut down by the X-vectored fire coming into this area, which would not harm this squad as it was safe to do so as there was hilly terrain in this area and the AI system, of course, it, it essentially let the NCOs of each squad know and other, every vehicle crew know when it was safe to fire specific weapon types as, again, this revolutionized warfare and made friendly fire incidents almost down to zero because even the AI calculated aspects such as terrain features which advised them to go into this ravine in the first place to cut off this group trying to flee this area, this large group right here. And as this group came into this area, they all linked up with the technical that went in here with the foot personnel, the scout that was scouting ahead on the ATV, linking up with these two prongs of this large group fleeing the airstrikes. They had moved into this area with this group right here moving up and linking up with them. They thought they could make a breakout together against the forces ahead of them as they realized there were Marines ahead because the scout had seen this going on up here. So they were going to try and effect a breakout, but it failed because precision artillery was ISR guided onto all of them with 122 millimeter saturation as several firing batteries fired on this area all at one time and effectively annihilated this massive group right here, which was even larger, adding this vehicle with these two personnel and this group of people in the technical and following behind on foot and this grouping right here of well over a dozen personnel. All of these personnel were annihilated in this fire mission that was ISR directed and on point precise. As the airstrikes and the artillery strikes, the gunship strikes and more basically won the day, the organization and logistics backing up this massive assault were well prepared, well coordinated, well organized and came up a well guarded supply route that was efficient because Route 6 ran from the port right into the town itself of Alvin and the, they were easy to supply as even supply 
supply drones would make drops at the LZ for their other forces of ammunition, which could then even be run up to other forces in other areas, or the drones could take it directly to them themselves. As the battle had been won, and the PLAN Marines could claim a, another victory notch in their belt, so to speak, the last major pocket of Americans had been outright annihilated in this town, although they tried to put up a tenacious fight, and they did cause some PLAN Marine casualties. Again, the casualties were highly lopsided for all of the reasons, as always given, as the ISR is gone while the PLA and other coalition forces have superior ISR, which includes the PLAN Marines, and more. The air power factor, as well as even missile strikes, could